So these are the few ingredients we're going to be using today. Cherry tomatoes, the chilies, aubergine. These are sort of uh, fotol is called. Right, I'm going to need to get this gourd out. Bismillah. Whoa. Right, so over here. One, two, three, four, five. These are dessert spoons, so it's not much that it picks up. You need about four to six tablespoons of uh, sunflower oil, vegetable oil is fine. I've got four British medium sized onions, so one, so it's about two large handfuls. I'm going to use this is one whole bud of um, garlic. About 15 cloves of garlic, so it's going to be quite a lot of garlic, my sister's saying, but this garlic itself has a very sweet taste uh, when it's cooked. Um, so let me put the gas on a medium-high gas. I'm going to cook this. I'm actually giving the garlic as much respect as a vegetable, so I'm roasting it in the dish, and then it's going to be, I'm going to cook it for a while, and it's going to be hopefully mashed like a base gravy, everything just um, mashes up it and uh, it breaks away sort of thing. So now I'm going to need some salt. So I've got some salt. That's about two and a half teaspoon of salt. Got a lovely wooden spoon. There we go. Cut up. Cooking away. Now this is the bay leaf. So what I'm going to do is nice and fresh. Uh, my sister's saying it might be overpowering, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stick in two. Even if it is overpowering, I think two is going to be fine, especially it's fresh from the garden. I've always wanted to cook fresh from the garden, and now my sister, thankfully, has given me the opportunity. Now I'm going to start cooking the lovely meat in this casserole pot. So once again, I'm going to need some oil. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight of this dessert spoon. It's not tablespoon, but if you're using tablespoon, it's about four to six should be fine. Right, this is the mutton, kurbani meat. So uh, basically a sacred meat um, that we had on Eid. And this is probably about one and a half kg. So we're just adding the same, bismillah. So this was the Eid al Adha uh, meat. So one, two, three, about four handfuls. So good two uh, onions. If it's too many onions, the problem is it's gonna have a really thick sauce which you don't want because we'll be cooking with potatoes. Now the key um, to spe speeding up, make sure you've got some boiling water. So add a bit of water. This helps. There you go. The onions are lovely and golden and caramelized. And what this is gonna do is just soften everything up. It just helps. So the heat of the um, oil and the temperature from the gas. There you go. I'll zoom into here for you guys. There you go. Beautiful, smells divine. What do you think, Mama? How does it smell? Yeah, it smells, nice. smells good, yeah? Can't wait to eat it. You can't wait to eat it. Me neither. There you go. Lovely, golden, amazing colours, and the fragrance is absolutely beautiful. Now, this is going to be um, the meat cooking away in this lovely casserole dish. I think I'm more excited in this uh, casserole dish than the actual meat. So there's plenty of oil in there and there was a bit of water. Um, so I'm going to cook this and I'm going to add some ginger and garlic now. So if it's about one kg um, of meat, I normally use about one tablespoon of um, 
ginger. So what I'm going to do here is add one, so about two heat teaspoon of garlic, sorry ginger. I've used up the garlic so I'm going to add, I like a lot of garlic so I'm going to add about three teaspoons of garlic. Well everything in here but for you I'll say three teaspoons. So two teaspoon ginger, three teaspoon garlic and this lovely fresh bay leaf. The waft of it is amazing. You want to smell it? That's it. Smells nice? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. uh, one, two, four. Um, when we cook the meat, we use the garam masala, which is like uh, obviously the cassia bark and everything, because um, meat can be a bit smelly. And when we use these um, lovely fragrant spices, it adds flavor, as well as the lovely um, fragrance essence that smells. So there you go. Star anise. Um, you know, I'm not a massive fan of star anise, uh, but you can use it. It's very aniseedy, uh, but it's going to be nice and fragrant. So we just add, I'll just add one, and there's a half here, so one and a half. So we're going to use some cassia bark, which is the cinnamon um, family, which adds a bit of sweetness as well as a peppery heat. So. go one two three four about four pieces of that so one and a half kg so I'm going to use one two teaspoon and just a little bit more because I'm going to add some potatoes so the problem with salt if you add too less it's not flavorsome and if you add too much you know the story when it's too much right so we're going to add some green pepper at this moment and we're going to add some right in the end uh, the reason we're adding this now is for the flavor so i'll get one two i'll leave four wedges for garnish in the end so i'll put four here and these are the green chilies from the organic vegetable patch so one two mama do you like your meat spicy uh, just, a little. just a little bit yeah. so we'll add one two three four five five of it now because that's going to add a lot of flavor and what i do with green chilies i just snap the bottom of it there you go that releases it's all its flavor and this is going to dissolve anyway so you won't be able to even recognize this there you go so that goes in now get me the lid please mama uh, what's the... oh, yeah. now i put the lid on bismillah and this process normally i give about 45 minutes to an hour basically um i put in a about a cup and a half of baby water which was at on the meat and the meat itself releases a lot of liquid um, I may have to add a bit more liquid liquid into here if you like your meat nice and soft but we like it with a slight little bite to it and um, so I'm gonna let this cook away really now these onions are softening up beautifully lovely golden caramelized there you go. when you can smash it with your spoon that's when you know it's for time for the spices so now we're not there yet Tomatoes. Yeah, these cherry tomatoes. Normally, I would add these towards the end, uh, but you know she's been blessed with a nice harvest, so I'm gonna add some now uh, for a bit of flavor. So if I add the tomatoes now, I don't need to add any tomato puree or anything, guys. The tomato there is gonna do the job, and it, which makes the sauce uh, in a nice little thick texture, which we want. But this is gonna have a lovely little tanginess. Is that yeah. tangy for the Yeah. Well, this is sweet. Sweet, yeah. Sweet. I just tasted one, it's got a nice little tang to it and a sweet flavour. So it's very, it's that fruity, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fruity. So let's have a little taste. Bismillah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I'm going to add a bit more water. The reason being, the garlic haven't smashed to my liking. Oh, you can smash it here. No, 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 I want it to naturally dissolve. Put the lid on both these dishes. I'm going to come back to it. Um, it's been over 10 minutes for here. I've estimated about 15 to 20 minutes time, so I'll come back to it in five minutes and check it. Yeah. yeah. It's, like... it's been about five minutes, guys. 
Mm, smells, nice. smells absolutely divine. The smell of garlic and onion in oil, that itself is beautiful. In fact, I'm going to have to show you a close up. Look at that. Look at this amazing gorgeousness. Absolutely beautiful. Wonderful little waft of this amazing fragrance. It's going to be nice and sweet uh, from the onions and garlic. There you go. These are breaking away. There you go. Come on, mate. There you go. Look at that. Amazing. That is going to create a lovely thickness in the broth, which I want. Let's look at the meat now. Bubbling away, there you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Once again, the water has um, evaporated. So I add a bit more water. Remember, I want the garlics and the onions to just break away. So it's been a good 15, 20 minutes now and needs a little bit more on this medium heat. Now I'm smashing the garlic as I'm cooking. It's been about five, 10 minutes on the meat. Time to give it a stir. Lots of liquid has come out of the meat. That's what I wanted. And this is mutton by the way. So mutton takes a little bit longer to cook. So once that liquid evaporates and it's become the onions and the tomatoes and the green peppers becomes mushy, that's when I know to add the spices. The garlic is smashing away with the bottom of my spoon. Absolutely beautiful. I've had a little smell. Mm -hmm. I've had a smell. Fantastic. Smells nice, honey. Yes. Very nice. Very Can't nice. wait to. Uh, yes. Yeah. One thing um, you may, as well as my sister, said to me um, it might be too much garlic, but I promise you, um, when I cook fish, I always add a little bit extra garlic anyway. I love the flavour of garlic. But the way I'm cooking it now, it's got like a roasted kind of flavour. So you get this natural sweetness from the garlic is going to come out. You don't really need to cook the onion for that long for the huddle fish. Yeah, why, the reason why I am is because I want it to just, basically you can't see this onions. I just want it to be um, yeah. nice, thick, like a gravy, like a roux. So I'm nearly there. That's why it's taking a long time. Guys, if you follow these uh, steps, with this lot of TLC, you're gonna have an amazing fish dish. And for the Bangladeshi viewers, I know how much you love this gardening organic uh, hodu. So to do the hodu justice, you need to work a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. So this normally you can cook it in about half an hour. Nagita fish, Afa? Yeah, it doesn't take 15, 20 long. minutes, half an hour? 20 minutes. Yeah, because this process takes 10 minutes, whack the fish in, another 10 minutes is done. Um, I, I would have smashed the onion personally yeah. um, and then put some uh, just a little bit of chili powder and turmeric powder and that would have been it yeah. and then towards the end some uh, green chilies green and chilies, yeah. throw in the fresh chilies. Well I'm going to add a few little bits of secrets of myself inshallah. I will let you yeah. do your magic okay. and I'll taste it and see inshallah. if I can approve. Inshallah. So now I think it's been a good uh, 20 minutes and the onions and the garlic have been smashed. Now I'm gonna ask my sister to give me her spices. So look at this. As you can see, the garlic, onions, everything's been smashed, softened up beautifully. Now we're gonna add the spices. So Bengali fish curry's main spice is turmeric. So I'm adding one teaspoon of turmeric. This is extra hot chili powder. Um, 
with this fish dish you don't want it to be sweet but you don't want it to be spicy uh, the gourd make, can make it naturally sweet so what I'm going to add is just one good heap teaspoon of chili powder that should be sufficient for the spice now a lot of people don't add the coriander powder I do because um, the fish has an amazing flavor it actually brings out the flavor oh. of the fish oh. so no so that's one good teaspoon and just a little bit quarter so something my sister doesn't normally use but hopefully she'll enjoy it so that's it now the important thing here is to cook out the spices you have to remember the spices are like vegetables so it's, you don't whack it in and then give it some respect so that's been put into here I normally cook the spices for fish about 10-15 minutes so I'm just adding a bit of water because the water's evap evaporated and I've just added a bit of water I'm going to put the lid on after a nice little mix kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan the caramelized onions and garlic so it needs a little bit more and the color is absolutely beautiful there you go so that's the seasoning done like I said gonna give it a nice TLC so this put the lid on good 10 minutes i'll come back to it in five minutes and check it while the spices cook we're going to be add this gourd the bangladeshi khodu there you go do you know Rafa, you can eat the skins that's why i'm keeping it yeah i'm gonna fry it since this is organic guys my sister's making the use of this because this is what my mom does uh, she fries like a bhaji out of this I'm and it's amazing it with lots of so nice crispy and flavorsome so there you go the piece de resistance the masterpiece is this lovely organic gourd there you go the water's evaporated so it's kind of sticking at the bottom ish added just a little drizzle of water I mean the water is the secret guys if you don't want the curry to be very oily just add a bit of water that helps so the oil is separated the spices have been cooked and now we can add the khudu now this is the gourd look at that it's got its seeds in all so i'm going to put in as much as i can fit in there you go that's plenty yeah it's going to reduce so what i'm going to do i'm going to put the lid back on let the natural liquid from the gourd come out and cook this for <clears throat> this will take about 15 20 minutes and then i'll be adding the fish right it's been one hour's cooking time from the start to till now for the, the gourd Still hasn't changed in color, so it needs a bit more cooking time. I'm gonna give it five more minutes, then I'm gonna add the fish. Taste a bit of the salt. Tastes nice and spicy. Now let's check on the meat. Yep consistency is ideal for the spices now I'm going to put the reduce the gas it was on the highest heat so it's a medium medium to low I'm going to add uh, turmeric one good uh, teaspoon I'm going to add coriander powder one two teaspoon chili powder this is extra hot chili powder, so one and a half. I've been told it's extra, so it should be nice and spicy. That, if you like it like a Madras strength, add two and a half um, or more. If you like Vindaloo ridiculously hot, add about four teaspoons. If you don't like it too spicy, add about half a teaspoon. Now 
this is just basic curry powder spice which you can buy from the shop it's not a mixed powder so we're just adding one teaspoon of curry powder and we're gonna add some cumin so I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of cumin that's enough spices I'm not gonna add the garam masala because we've added a little bit we've added quite a bit of the uh, cassia bark um, the cinnamon stick, the cardamom, there's plenty. So I'm not gonna need the powdered version. Garam masala is basically the powdered version of these. Now, this smells absolutely divine. And normally, um, I would cook this for a further 10, 15 minutes. I want the spices to get cooked. I put the gas down to a medium low. It was on a medium high. So I put the lid back on and it's on a medium low now spices are like vegetables like I said so if it's too high you, the spices will stick which we don't want uh, right moving over it's been a good five minutes I would say for the gourd curry that is almost there it's time for the fish now I don't want to add any water, I want the natural liquid from the gourd but I may have to add some water but there's going to be some liquid that's going to come out of the fish anyway so there you go, it's almost cooked, almost cooked there you go, let me show this there you go, it's almost cooked so, For my still there you go that's the fish skin and all Bangladeshi midka fish we're using the gelatinous bone marrow from the fish head this brings out the flavor and traditionally gourd curries are cooked with the fish head so that goes in give it a nice stir after five minutes or so, I'll see how much liquid has come out of the fish and I may add some boiling water, so I'll put the kettle on. So all go in the kitchen. Put the lid on. Right, let's check on the meat. Bubbling away. Now normally when the water evaporates and the oil separates from the meat, that's when I know everything's cooked to how I want it. Now this is ideal to add the potatoes. Meat, cooking away, amazing, beautiful. Right now, <clears throat> right now, the potatoes are going in. Bismillah. That's all the garden potatoes. I've added quite a fair bit of salt because I thought we'll have a nice, good harvest of the potatoes. But um, it wasn't. But it's going to have some nice, lots of liquid in it. So it should be perfectly fine. So these potatoes should take about 15, 20 minutes to cook anyway. So I'm going to cook this up for a little bit and then I'm going to add some water. Put the lid back on and let's check on the fish. Beautiful, there you go, it smells amazing. Smell the fish, carefully mix this. You don't want anything to break. Now, I've got the boiling water ready. You do not need to add water. There's plenty of liquid here, but we prefer it a little bit thinner. So adding just a bit of water. That 
that was maybe a couple of cups of water just covered everything there you go put the lid on and let that cook away does it smell delivery? Mm, it smells nice how does it look? it looks good what we decided we put all the potatoes in yeah. but it's not enough from the harvest so we're just going to add is that two or one potato we're adding? Yeah. two so my sister's adding two more of her potatoes that she's bought from Tesco <laughs> good old Tesco to the saviour bismillah yeah. meat and potato is wonderful everybody loves meat and potato kids love it it's their favourite probably so there you go, all that liquid naturally has just evaporated away and now I'm going to cook this for a good 5 minutes then we're going to add some water and cook it for a further 15 minutes or so and that will be ready It's amazing fish curry boiling away Check on the mutton. Yep. Sort of catching to the bottom. So I think it's time for some water. I think the bottom can cut it on. Yeah. Can you put some water in, please? Like this one. Enough. to cover the meat now that's good. just enough water to cover the meat a little bit more first it's going to get reduced down that's fine enough water just to cover the meat there's plenty of onions tomatoes and green pepper which created the gravy and now it's going to need a good 10 15 minutes on a high heat of this uh, gas hob and then we're going to add some coriander to finish there you go so the frozen let's see your frozen coriander so this is the coriander from the garden with its flower and petals uh, now the fish curry is done now the cooking time was about one hour ten minutes this is going to build, give it a lovely fragrance as well as a little bit of flavour. So there you go, the coriander's in there. I'm going to simmer this for a few minutes and then we're going to turn the gas off. Actually, it's looking really nice. Looking nice, yeah? Very nice. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now I'm not going to put the lid on. I'm going to let this uh, cook away because what sometimes if you put the lid on, the pressure of the heat makes the fish break away, which you don't want. So now, quite a few minutes simmer. And let that coriander just take just away. Infuse the coriander yeah, that's it. The that's it. No, leave that in on again. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. A few minutes and then the fish is gonna be done. Potato has gone. There you go. The oil is separated. That's gonna be nearly done. And then we're just cooking some rice. One hour, just over one hour, ten minutes, guys. Since I put the coriander in, or well, my sister put the coriander in, <clears throat> well, I've given it a further few minutes. lovely color sort of yellowy color there you go that's wonderful now there you go smells absolutely to die for beautiful right I promised the lovely organic uh, vegetables just as a garnish you do not need to add these I am doing it because it's nice organic from the garden uh, why not? There you go. Let's see. I want to have a nice crunch. So I don't want these vegetables to break away. I just want it to have a nice little al dente crunch to it. So. 
10 minutes, and we'll be done. Right, let's check on the meat. Let's move up. Yo, yo, look at that. Looks divine. Now we need to check the potato. Oh, fuck, can you just eat that potatoes? This one we got. Yeah, this one is fine. Just need to double check on the potatoes. On the garden. The garden potatoes. Yeah. Done, yeah? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Turn the gas off. My sister's inspection. Done. Amazing. Look at that. It just looks so beautiful. This one's the laddie with that tomatoes and stuff. Yeah. This is proper organic curry, yeah? Except if only the meat was organic. If you had sheep in the back of your garden, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's what your husband is. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Amazing. Alhamdulillah. Let's give it a nice wipe and put it on the table. Rice is nearly done. The aubergine needs to get ready. Nice little salad. And then we're going to start eating shortly. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, very happy the way it looks. I just hope the family and I, we enjoy the taste. MashaAllah, it looks really nice. Are you proud yeah, of your vegetable? Color, yes. And you know what I like mostly? This casserole dish, proper British uh, casserole yeah. style curry. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and this lovely, that's your cherry tomatoes from the garden. Cherry tomatoes, peppers, cap capsicum. And the potatoes. And we used rich. some of the British potatoes uh, from Tesco's. But yeah, hopefully we're gonna have, and the, obviously the coriander, it's fresh from nice. the garden. So it looks amazing, and let's put it on the table. What a feast for us today. So this is the aubergine, uh, baba ganoush called borta, cherry tomato salad, with rock salt, red onions, and it's also got that chocolate tomato, fresh olive oil. Cucumbers with a bit of rock salt. Putkisatni with the taro leaves, khosu, and fermented fish paste. And lovely kurbani mutton meat with all the garden veggies, boiled rice, the gourd fish curry, and we've got takadal, chicken curry, and this is also a Bangladeshi, a Bangladeshi fish curry with the denga. And the fish, is it? Fish. And with the gualmas. And my nephew really enjoyed this. Yeah. We are absolutely stuffed. Had a really nice meal. What do you think, guys? Did you enjoy it? Yeah! Yeah? So if you enjoyed this lovely little vlog with the family, organic fruit and vegetable from the garden, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And join me on Instagram and say hello. See you soon for more fantastic videos at Latif's Inspired. See you later. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right now we can play.